It is a time of great change and conflict, as the Empire of Rome spreads her influence across the Mediterranean. As a governor, will you support Rome in these times? Will you act as her architect and protector? Will you help spread the glory of Rome across the known world in a golden age that will last till the end of time? Grand Ages Rome is a city-building management game where you take on the role of a governor who is tasked with settling a number of historical Roman provinces. At the start of the game, you'll be presented with a campaign map and allowed to choose which missions you want to tackle in what order. Most missions require you to build a flourishing city, although you will often have secondary objectives such as building specific monuments or defeating barbarian hordes. The process of building your city is fairly straightforward. Clicking on the map will bring up an action wheel with all of your available buildings divided into subcategories. Once you've selected the type of building that you want, simply click on any open area of the map to place it down. Now, the game has four basic types of buildings. Production buildings, such as lumber yards and mines, which will harvest raw materials for you. Support structures, such as theaters and temples, which help make your citizens happy. Housing, which provides the space for the workers that will be employed in your production and support buildings. And finally, military camps, which will allow you to train and recruit the soldiers to defend your city. Gameplay-wise, the strategy of Grand Ages is based around proximity and expansion. For proximity, as you'll notice almost immediately when you start construction on your city, every building you place has an area of effect. This is important because your citizens will not be able to work or eat or worship at any structures that are outside of the area effect of their homes. On top of that, Effects from buildings of the same type do not stack, so in order to get the best services for your citizenry, you need to provide them with a variety of support structures in order to get the best effect. At the same time, expansion is another important part of Grand Ages, because the game uses a static resource system. What I mean by this is that when you build a, say, lumber yard, Instead of accumulating resources over time, instead what happens is the game provides you with a fixed amount of resources as soon as construction is finished. These resources are then allocated as upkeep when you build new structures, which reduces your overall total. So, in order to continue growing your city, you must constantly expand, looking for new resources to add to your pool or improving your existing infrastructure. Eventually, your expansion will lead you into conflict with regional barbarians, at which point you'll need to rally your troops and fight them off. At the start, you'll only have access to basic infantry, but better troops are available either with additional support structures or through specialized research from the library and academies. Combat is extremely straightforward, simply point and click to tell your troops where to attack, Although when traveling across some of the larger maps, you may want to keep an eye on them to make sure that nobody's moving too far outside of formation. Now, the good thing about Grand Ages Rome is that it has very satisfying core gameplay. Your basic houses require food and water and entertainment, and in exchange give you a basic workforce. Then, getting more elite citizens to move in requires specific materials and a greater variety of support structures. With eventually the largest and most useful structures in your city requiring careful resource management and planning. The game also has some interesting micro and macro progression systems. On the small scale, each city is capable of building a forum, which is an open area that all of your citizens can visit and congregate in. And this forum upgrades automatically over time, as your city reaches certain wealth or population or military milestones, slowly becoming more elaborate and prestigious as you play. 
On the large scale, the game offers character progression as well. Each time you complete a mission, you'll be rewarded with a skill point, which can be used to unlock specific bonuses from three different skill trees. And as you unlock these new abilities, it can change how you play the game, since certain tactics may become more effective. Now, unfortunately, Grand Ages also has its fair share of problems. Some of the minor ones include building placement and pathfinding. For the first one, you cannot place buildings on uneven ground, but knowing exactly where the ground is uneven is often difficult to tell unless you're zoomed in directly close to the ground. Now, to its credit, the game does include a subsystem where you can construct flat plazas over uneven ground, but placing plazas is often just as tricky as placing normal buildings, so at best this one gets a pass. Pathfinding is a bit more obvious of a problem, as your troops will occasionally change direction and orientation seemingly at random. Large battles can be particularly troublesome, with combat being almost nightmarishly indistinct. Although, to balance it out, the enemy doesn't fare much better, and they will willingly march into kill boxes without a care in the world. However, the thing which really sabotages the game is its awful visual design. At best, it's just ineffectual, but at worst, it's downright confusing. For instance, here's a minor example involving the interface. All of the information about your resources is divided into subcategories and then hidden at the bottom of the screen. In order to get detailed breakdown of things such as building materials and food, you have to click on each individual category. Now, granted, this is not a game-breaking inconvenience, but it is an inconvenience nonetheless, and there's no reason why these details couldn't have been part of an info bar at the bottom of the screen the same way that your money and popularity points are at the top. Here's another example that relates to on-screen combat information. If you're wondering why my ships appear to be bursting into flames for seemingly no reason, it's because the projectiles which are being fired between them and the barbarians are tiny in size, almost an identical color to the background, and are also being obscured by weather effects. For a more moderate example, I would point you towards the game's poor in-game modeling. And I'm talking specifically about the way that the buildings are designed. You see, this is a game where having a variety of structures is the key to a happy population. And yet, many of the buildings are visually either indistinct or worse, uncomfortably similar to each other. I mean, look here. This is an average selection of structures which you might find in any part of your city. And it's almost impossible to tell them apart without clicking on them. There's nothing about them that immediately indicates their role or operation. And this is just an isolated segment. I mean, try to imagine an entire city built out of row after row of these same looking buildings. It makes it a huge hassle to try and visually identify what sort of services an area has and what it lacks. And even moving on from there, the major example I have of the game's poor visual design is how it handles large-scale map movement. You may have noticed by now that, despite my cities being quite large, there's no mini-map on display. So how is it exactly that I am able to navigate around? Well, it's through the convenience slash inconvenience of extreme zoom. Essentially, during the normal game, in addition to being able to pan the camera, you can zoom from ground level to overhead view. If you continue zooming out, you go into extreme zoom. At this point, you can view and rotate the entire map, and if you click on any individual location, the camera will immediately center on it. Now, this kind of map zoom is not inherently bad, and I have seen it used well in other instances. But for some reason, Grand Ages also chooses to lock you into a specific angle of view when you're zoomed out like this. And while that might not sound bad initially, take a look at what's happening at the edges of the screen. You see that? Parts of the map are completely cut off. 
I'm losing huge chunks of terrain unless I rotate to a specific orientation. Buildings are getting occluded, details are getting lost. I understand that from a design standpoint, this probably looks incredibly cinematic, but from a utility perspective, it's incredibly frustrating. In the end, I find myself giving Grand Ages Rome two out of four stars, but I don't give it a recommendation. As city builders go, it's average, maybe even above average, but it's buried under a visual design that makes you do far more work than you should have to. Well, thanks once again for listening. I'll see if I can't find something a little more glorious next time.